The next political party I will look at who stood at the general election is the Animal Protection Party. Let's now listen to Carrie Holliman, who spoke about the Animal Protection Party at this year's World Day for Animals in Laboratories. Thank you, Andrew Tyler. Our next speaker is a spokesperson from the Animal Protection Party. Please welcome Carrie. Hello. What a great day. What a great bunch of people. And here we all are. Are we great? Yes, I think we are. We see that we have to support the vulnerable and the weak in our society before anything can change. We don't disassociate those animals in the wild and those animals that we live with, with those that are being tortured in the labs. And for many of us, those awful pictures, those images of those animals being tortured stay with us so much that we can't sleep. And yet here we are. It is wrong to think that our movement hasn't been battered over the past couple of years. We have great campaigners who are in prison, who are on ASBOs, who can't speak about animal rights, who can't move without the police following them. It's ridiculous. And yet, for many of us, we stand tall because we realise that we cannot turn our back on those animals who need us and need us now. We, as a movement, we sign petitions, we send emails, we hold posters, we go on campaigns, we get up in the middle of the night when no one else would, we follow people, we talk to people, we become vegan, we do everything we can. And for me, I started an organisation called the Animal Protection Party and it is the same animal rights message, it's just told in a different way. For anybody who doesn't know the political procedure, you need 10 signatures in the wards that you stand from ordinary Joe public to allow you to be able to stand as a political party. We stand in four constituents and in each four constituents we have managed to get those 10 signatures in one street. That is unheard of. Now we don't have any policies, no Sophie's choices. This is just about working on a mission statement and we go to any anti-animal MP and we stand against them with one message. That animal abuse is enough and that we are here to stop it. So where, do we, where are we standing? Well, we've got the wonderful Jim. Where are you, Jim? Come along, Jim. <laughs> hey, I see your, I see your water bottle. Jim is standing in Vauxhall. He's standing against Kate Hoey, who is the chairperson of the Countryside Alliance. Our tagline is Tally Hoey, and he's getting such great response. He's on the internet, he's going to so many hustings, it's brilliant. As you can see, Jim unfortunately only got 96 votes. This is a shame, because one assumes Kate Hoey, the chairperson of the Countryside Alliance, supports the hideous blood sport of shooting. I can assure you, the children of Vauxhall, an area I know well, don't need such an inappropriate role model as their Member of Parliament. Then we have Sarah. Sarah is a member of SARC. She is standing in a new constituency called Meon Valley. Meon Valley covers Wickham Lab. And we have to have uh, all our candidates nominated and nobody knew where we were standing in any of the areas until four o'clock on Tuesday. So in those three to four days that they've known that we are about, Sarah has been interviewed by the Portsmouth News, the Hampshire Chronicle, Petersfield Post and the BBC uh, Radio Solent just talking about the atrocities that are happening in Wickham Lab. I need you to support her on sa next Saturday, the 1st of May, if you are in that area and you want to help, just leaflet, just talking to people on the street, then please support her. So how did Sarah get on? 
Sarah, as you can see, did slightly better than Jim, with a total of 255 votes. We have Keith Mann in Oxford. He is standing against the horrendous uh, Evan Harris, who we have named on our leaflet Dr. Death. And can I just say that every constituency Every postcode for every building has a leaflet about what it is that we are standing for. That is over half a million people in those constituencies will know what is going on in their ward. Keith has already spoken in the last couple of days on BBC Oxford, um, Oxford uh, News as well, a newspaper. Both of them were very excited about the fact that they'd actually interviewing a guy that escaped from prison. One has to say that Keith Mann succeeded in his and the Animal Protection Party's objective of making sure that those MPs with a record of being unsympathetic to animal suffering do not prosper. Evan Harris, thankfully, did not prosper as he lost his seat to the Conservatives. And then there's me. I'm going to sink like a stone, no doubt, because I'm going into the Tory safe seat of Huntingdon. <laughs> but who cares? Everyone knows what, what it is that we're doing. I was on Cambridge Radio the other day, and I mentioned to say, I managed to say in three times, there are 500 animals dying in that lab every day. That it is the biggest animal lab in Europe. Everybody's got a leaflet. We're out on the street and we're getting a great support. Before we see how Carrie got on in the Huntington constituency election, let's hear what Green Party leader Caroline Lucas had to say about Huntington Life Sciences in 2009. <laughs> So how did Carrie get on in the Huntington constituency? Unfortunately, she only polled 181 votes. However, the success of the Animal Protection Party shouldn't be just measured on the number of votes gained, but rather on the level of exposure that they evidently achieved regarding the often hidden nightmare of animal cruelty that goes on in this country.